Cool. Uh, so I think we're gonna get one more talk. I got all confused by the number of people. David uh, is oh, here. Yeah. He's got to do the Mac thing. So uh, let's try to give you a presenter and then he'll do a restart and hopefully once you're able to just try to share your screen. But in the meantime, um, oh, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, so David uh, is from Active Loop and I'm going to talk about uh, visualization of airborne imagery by uh, Cloud First Hub. So, uh, yeah, welcome, David, and take it away. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity to have a talk. I'll try to be short. Um, and thanks for everyone for hanging out. I think the last talk, I believe, for the day. Um, maybe just brief introduction myself. Um, I'm founder of Active Loop. Before that, I was doing a PhD at, Act uh, at Princeton University, working with the neuroscience data. And one of one of the key challenges actually we had there as well was processing large volumetric data sets. And the, by large, I mean 100,000 by 100,000, like 20,000 pixels or voxels as a single sample, which was a petabyte scale data set. And processing that on the cloud was costing us a lot of money. And our problems was basically how we can rethink how the data should be stored, how it should be streamed from the storage to the computing machines, should be used CPUs, GPUs, and what kind of models to use um, to be able to solve these challenges in a very efficient and optimized manner so we can process these data sets. And apparently not only inside our lab, but also in other labs and also in, in, across the industry, and especially in AI imaging space, we have seen the same similar problems that we have been tackling. And, at Actively, what we do provide a quick intro is that we provide a very simple API for creating, storing, and collaborating on AI datasets of any size, rapidly help you transform and stream the data while training models at scale, and also instantly query version control and explore and visualize the datasets directly on your browser. And all this for helping and freeing deep learning teams and data scientists to develop AI products faster by providing a solid data foundation to them. Um, we also like work with companies and customers of ours in, in air imaging space who are operating at petabyte scale data sets and helping them to manage their unstructured data sets. And what we have seen repeatedly over is that what <clears throat> companies have been trying to do is that they were, let's say, they have a large repository stored on an S3, and every time a data scientist starts a laptop or starts a training job or running a large scale inference job, what happens is that they copy this large GRT file to the EC2 machine, and then they run their pipeline. And sometimes this works great, but if you're running at scale, you have seen likely all these problems related with one GRT file could be like 100,000 by 100,000, another one can be 20,000 by 20,000, and then you end up, while processing this in batches, all this underutilized computation that's happening behind the scenes. And that's why you have seen the raise of the many or a few of the cloud formats that are native for making all this processing much more efficient. What we do differently is that we make this possible to stream the data from, let's say, an object storage like S3 to the computing machines, the GPUs, as if this data was local to the machine. So we optimize the data layout on top of an object storage such that for your GPUs, when they run the computation, there's no any much difference to be able, either they're reading from a local virtualized file system or they're reading from a remote storage. And <clears throat> now, either you're on your laptop you're on a SageMaker notebook or you're doing all your multi-GPU training job or running the inference job, you actually can access the, the same data set as if like you were watching sort of a Netflix while streaming the data directly to the TensorFlow or PyTorch or your um, high-performance computing jobs. And I think the tech behind the scenes is very similar to your community as well in the sense that we take, let's say, all these messy unstructured data sets, we transform them into large NumPy arrays, or we call them tensors, and then let's say an image of um, 1 million images as a separate files could be actually treated as a single tensor, 1 million by 512 by 512 by 3. And we, if you chunk it properly and accordingly, and then you have a very good efficient prefetching algorithm, being aware of the ML computations, what we are able to show that while an average data set, data set can you can a data scientist can access let's say in 41 hours by downloading all the zip files, um, zipping them, understanding the API. This is the project we did in collaboration with Google um, Brain Team um, and with our Python package, which is also open source. You can just import hub, you can sell hub, import hub, and then you can load the data directly by pointing it to a Google Cloud Storage or an S3 or any, um, wherever the files can exist. And now I instantly access the data set while you're accessing it, the data getting prefetched behind the scenes to your computing machines, decom decompressed, cached in, so everything is abstracted away so the data scientist doesn't, worry, doesn't have to worry about all this. And what we also show on the benchmarks, let's say you're trying to train a deep learning model on 
um, SageMaker on an EC2 machine with a GPU, let's say you have to, um, when you start the machine, you have to wait until the data getting copied, and then you train the model let's, for an hour. What they recently introduced as well, which is a great awesome tool, is Fast File Model Bear. You basically can create a virtualized file system on top of an S3. So now there's no any time you're waiting until the data get being copied, but now your training time takes two hours. And with our open source solution, you can achieve the same speed as if you're training this data um, locally, but actually the data getting streamed from from the cloud search. And here's also benchmarking how much, how many number samples per second you can get compared to other. Um, tools, data loaders in the field. Um, we also build a visualization tool um, that directly reads the data from S3 to the browser. So you actually don't have to run any backend server to be able to serve these tiles. All this data that you see is directly fetched from the um, S3 to the um, browser. And one of the key things, actually the whole information is pretty cool. Uh, we did uh, uh, run this rendering engine in C++ and compiled it to WASM using WebGL as a backend tool. And you can now like actually stream terabytes of scale data sets without any kind of um, middleman or a, bra or a rendering engine that's running as a backend. So the data directly gets streamed from the S3 to the, to the browser, the same way as it gets streamed to the GPUs to train all this data. And more than that, we do also support additionally as a functionality version control where you can version your data sets and create branches. You can have commits and then go back into a specific ver version of it with multiple layers. You can run queries on your data sets and for like, let's say filter some of them or look into some specific bounding boxes that you have been doing and also look into the data distributions per each tensors or layers you might have, including masks, um, like um, bounding boxes, like and, the, and your data obviously can have multiple <coughs> layers and shifts. Again, as I mentioned, we are heavy on open source. Our tool has been growing. Um, I think number, it was number two trend, trended on GitHub a year ago and number one in Python languages, considered to be one of the top 10 ML packages by a small boutique firm. And um, also we have been multiple times in Reddit ML community. We'd love you to join us. And our Slack community is slug.actable.ai. Feel free to join there. Um, I think what we are focused on solving is that TensorFlow, PyTorch, and others have done a huge, great job on optimizing the high-performance computations, especially in deep learning, on the hard accelerated hardware. And now, bringing the data from the remote storage to this um, frameworks is the bottleneck, and that's what we are focused on solving at our community. And we love you to join our community and us as well, joining Pangeo uh, here. Thank you very much for providing an opportunity to give a talk. Feel free to join at slack.xlu.a and we'll also give um, free uh, storage up to 500 GB if you ping Mikhail in our Slack channel. Thanks a lot for, and feel free to ask me any questions after the talk. All right, yeah, thanks a lot, David. That was, yeah, a great overview. And uh, um, yeah, please do post uh, any resources that you have in uh, Gitter. Thank you.